Uh, hello, uh, I am Tomoya Tanjo from National Institute of Genetics and National Institute of Informatics. Uh, today, I'll talk about PWD, that is a PWD parser for deprogramming language. Uh, here is an agenda of this talk. And please note that uh, this talk is mainly for the developers of CW-related tools, such as workflow engine and other development tools. So first of all, the syntax of CW is formally described in Sarada format, and CW community publishes Sigma Sarada 2, that is a referring tool for Sarada, and you can validate a CW document with it. And also, it can then generate some codes to handle CW documents for each programming language, such as Python, Java, C++, .NET, TypeScript, and D. And uh, such generated codes uh, basically include the uh, data structures, uh, such as uh, command line tool and workflows. And also some uh, codes gen includes the uh, password for them. So by using such generated codes, uh, we can easily develop uh, CW related tools. So this talk, uh, I will talk about this part and uh, decode for CW. So what is D? Um, yeah, it is, of course, it is a programming language. And here is an example of uh, our world in D. And then, yeah, it is sometimes referred to as D rank because uh, D is too short to name and it is hard to search for. So we call, sometimes call it D rank. And then it is statically typed language with C like syntax, as you can see here. And then it has many features such as uh, garbage collector by default. And then it supports OOP features, of course. And also it can call uh, C functions directly. And also uh, it is good at metaprogramming. So uh, why D for C array process? Uh, one reason is that uh, the parser generation is one of the good applications for D, and we can build the optim optimized parser with it. For example, um, uh, there exists the regular ex expression parser in the standard library, and also there exists the peg parser. And both of them uh, can uh, generate the uh, matcher and parser at compile time from the given storing representation of the syntax. So I thought that uh, how about generating CW passwords in D? So it is a starting point of this project. And finally, I, I done it. So how to use it, uh, CW passwords in D, for D? So currently, uh, the generated uh, code is published as CWD and it is published in the D package repository. So uh, you can use it um, by using the package and field to manage as follows. You can just initialize your project and then uh, you can uh, add the uh, CWD to your project that all. And it is quite simple. And also, um, of course, you, it is possible to generate a code with schema file tool directory as follows. So now um, it is ready to use CWD. So to use the, uh, for example, to load CW document, you can use uh, import from URI functions. Of course, it takes the uh, URI uh, to the uh, CW document. And it, it supports both packed and unpacked CW document. And it also supports fragment identifiers that is represented uh, as for here, uh, hash main or hash something. And it, it, it sometimes occurs in the complicated workflows. And uh, also, uh, CWD is supposed to serialize the CW objects because the, uh, all the objects in CWD provide a way to convert 
into a YAML node. So, uh, for example, you can uh, just uh, convert the command line to object into YAML node, and then uh, the converted YAML node uh, can be uh, dumped to standard uh, output uh, uh, files and so on. Well, now, um, we can serialize and deserialize the serial object in D. So as the next step, and then as a proof of concept, I implemented a workflow engine with it. It passes all the mandatory conformance tests for CW 1.0 for command line 2, as shown, shown here. And also it is provided as a single binary, including JavaScript engine. And therefore you can download it and put it in your computing node and you can use it. It is easy to deploy. Okay, so next let's dive into the internal of the debugger. Uh, currently it consists of two libraries. Uh, one is the CWD, and uh, uh, that only contains the data structure for CWL and uh, that are generated with schema salad tools. And it currently supports the, all the released version of CWL. And the second one is uh, named schema salad D, and that is a library to generate parsers from the uh, given data structures that are generated with schema salad tools. And the uh, rest of this talk shows an example of how the data structures and parsers for command line two are generated in the. And then here is a part of definition of command line tools. And um, as you know, it is uh, published in the CRP official website. And the uh, command line two has input of input fields. And it is free by other field, and its type is array of uh, command input parameters. And then note that it also supports the uh, map notation of command input parameters in addition to the array notation. So how to represent it in D? But then, yeah, it is mostly obvious. Uh, it is represented form in D. So uh, each data structure in C variable is represented as a class in D, and uh, each field of the uh, data structure is directly represented as the field of the class. And uh, uh, extra information such as some syntax sugars to support both array and map notations, and uh, to support some special type handling such, such as the uh, array types and uh, optional types. It's represented as user-defined attributes, as you can see here. And uh, uh, user-defined attributes is the uh, D meta programming features. And uh, in this case, uh, they are used to get the information to build paths at compile time. And uh, each class has uh, entry point here to generate constructors and converter to uh, YAML node. And uh, uh, this part is uh, generated uh, by using schema server tool. And the rest of the uh, path implementation is uh, in the schema server D. OK, uh, here is the uh, implementation of the uh, uh, to generate the constructor in D. And, uh, it is uh, implemented by using the mixing template, and that is a metaprogramming feature indeed to insert some declarations such as uh, constructors and some boilerplate functions and other uh, to declare uh, some internal fields. And also it internally uses the string mixing, uh, that is that takes a string and uh, it is to use the uh, to insert some uh, statement here. And currently, uh, uh, it uses uh, to insert the 
statement to uh, assign the, for each field. And here is the uh, implementation uh, to convert each uh, YAML node to uh, each type. And then currently it is implemented as the uh, template functions and uh, it is internally uses some uh, compile time branches and also uh, internally uses compile time groups, but uh, they are not included in the uh, compiler final because it is, and they are only occurring the uh, occurring the compile time. Anyway, um, so what is the advantage of dividing parser with PWD and schema salad D? Uh, well, advantage of this approach is uh, that uh, it is obvious to generate PWD part with schema salad D, uh, schema salad two because it only contains the data structures and the complicated parts of the parser are encapsulated in schema salad D. And also uh, it, uh, the CWD part is rarely changed because the syntax of CWL is basically stable for each release. And the second advantage of this ap approach is uh, it can improve the testability because the uh, CWD part is only contains uh, declarations. Therefore, uh, the, uh, for most cases, we can test uh, schema D for the parser. And also, we don't need to generate the CWD part only to fix parser because uh, it doesn't contain any parser implementation. And therefore, um, basically, uh, just updating schema D is enough for most cases. Okay, uh, here is the conclusion. Uh, I showed an overview of CWL Parser 4D, and it, it consists of two libraries, uh, CWD and Schema Salad D. And thanks to the power of metaprogramming in D, we can get parsers that are easy to maintain. And uh, here is the future work. Uh, currently, uh, I have developed several CWL related tool, but uh, uh, they use the uh, uh, handwritten parsers. So, uh, as a future work, I replace them with uh, CWD parsers. So, that's all. Thank you for your attention.